All right, this uh, this one is for thermodynamics, and thermodynamics says last year I made a refrigerator in my basement, and I needed to because I needed to figure out how. You know, there's no such thing as cold. There is only less heat. Okay, that's one of the key things that we have here is there is no such thing as cold. There is only the absence of heat. So the goal for this presentation is to, number one, understand the relationship between heat work and temperature. So we've talked about heat and temperature. We want to throw work into there because work is actually very useful when we start to talk about things like engines. Number two, we want to know the four laws of thermodynamics as well as examples of each. You need to understand some key vocabulary for this unit. There are some very interesting words that you're going to have to learn and have to know how to apply them to a given situation. And number four, you need to understand the role of all of the above and how an air conditioning works, how refrigerators work, and how heaters work. So number one is the system. We want to define the system as the collection of objects or molecules that are being studied. Now it can be anything from uh, a solution like that's shown here, the earth, a universe, a one particular room. It can be any system that you're actually looking at. It can be something that's microscopic. Now you should know by now that something that's microscopic is a very, very small view of a particular system. Something that's macroscopic is taking a look at the system as a whole. So, for example, if my system is this beaker, I could look microscopically at look what happens to one individual molecule, or I can look at what happens to the whole. The surroundings is everything that is not a part of the system. So if you define the system to be the solution in the beaker, the surroundings would not only be the beaker, the air above the beaker, but it would also be the table, it would be the unit, everything that's in the universe. The goal of thermodynamics is to isolate the system from the surroundings. Now that's almost impossible. You cannot isolate everything purely and say, this is the system and it has no other effect on anything else. That's almost impossible to do. Thermodynamics is the study of heat and work and how they are transformed from one to another. So we can use work to create heat, to heat our houses and so forth, and we can use heat to create work like we do with our engines for our cars and so forth. The first law of thermodynamics is actually called the zeroth law. So they had laws one and two and they said, oh, we need this other one and it needs to go first. So they named it the zeroth law of thermodynamics. And it makes sense. It just says if two systems are in thermal equilibrium with a third, they will be in thermal equilibrium with another. So if this is 50 and this is 50, that means this one in the middle has to be 50. So it's just a definitional thing saying if two are in thermal equilibrium, they have to be in thermal equilibrium with a third. Okay. Next, you have the first law of thermodynamics, and that says that heat and work are forms of energy, and that energy can flow into and out of a system, but it cannot be created or destroyed. And that is just a restatement of the law of conservation of energy, which we learned earlier this year. So you can create energy, you cannot create energy, you cannot destroy energy, but you can change the form of that energy. And you see that here with the equation that we have right here, which says delta U equals Q plus W. Delta U stands for the total energy in a system. Q stands for heat, and W stands for work. So you can add to the energy of a system by adding heat or doing work on the system. By that I mean compressing the system, okay, or adding heat. Now you can also take energy out of the system and you can do that by doing two things you can remove heat or what you can do is you can expand the object so you can allow it to, to get bigger so some key vocabulary terms that you do need to know number one you need to know isothermal isothermal means there's no change in temperature if there is no change in temperature then there is no change in internal energy if there's no change in internal energy then the heat that's gained by the system is equal to the work done by the system. So these two have to equal each other. If you have something that's isochoric, isochoric, sometimes it's called isovolumetric, but isochoric means there's no change in volume. If there is no change in volume, that means that there is no work done, because remember, work requires two things. It requires a force, and it requires the object to move. If it doesn't change its volume, then it's not actually moving, so there's no work. So that means the amount of heat added to the system is equal to the amount of 
uh, energy that the system gains. The next one is isobaric. Isobaric says there is no change in pressure. If there is no change in pressure, there is no work done. Because work requires a force, and pressure is what gives that force. Pressure is force divided by area. So if you don't have pressure, you don't have a force, so you have no work, so delta U would equal Q again. And finally, you have the adiabatic system. The adiabatic system is one in which there is no change in heat. If there is no change in heat, that means you can cross through this, and the temperature that's gained by the system is just equal to the work. Remember, Q is positive if heat flows into the system and W is positive if work is done by the system, so if it expands, okay, then work is positive. The second law of thermodynamics says that heat spontaneously flows from a substance of higher temperature to a substance of lower temperature and never spontaneously in the reverse direction. It also says that any reaction is never 100% efficient because some energy will always be lost to the surroundings due to heat. So this is just another way of saying that entropy always increases. So what is entropy? Entropy is the measure of disorder in a system. It is always increasing. No matter what, you will always have more disorder in a system than you would before. So think about it. If you just kind of leave your room alone, your room tends to disorder. There starts to be clothes on the floor. There's a paper over here. There's you know books over there. There's all kinds of stuff that kind of spreads out. And it actually takes energy for you to go in and clean it. When it takes energy for you to clean it, you're actually creating more energy by burning um, and creating more heat by moving around the room. Okay? Entropy is not heat, but generally they move together. So the more heat there is, generally the more entropy there is. The third law of thermodynamics, which is really the fourth one, says that the entropy of zero is defined as a perfectly ordered crystal, so one in which all the molecules are the exact distance apart that they're supposed to be at zero Kelvin. Now you should remember that zero Kelvin is an impossibility. So by saying that the third law of thermodynamics says the entropy of zero is defined as that, you cannot have an entropy of zero and you cannot have a negative entropy. So you have to have some sort of positive entropy value. Now we get to this, the Carnot engine. The Carnot engine is a heat engine that involves four stages. And what it does is it, it's really used for refrigerators and ACs and heaters and so forth like that because they are trying to move heat. Now they're not breaking the second law of thermodynamics because they actually, uh, they just move the heat that is there around. So what a refrigerator does is it actually pushes the heat that's in the refrigerator out, and that's how it cools it down. Um, so if you actually look, the outside of a refrigerator is actually warmer than room temperature because it's pushing the heat from the refrigerator or that's inside out. So there are basically four stages to a Carnot engine. And you get isothermal expansion, okay, which means where the temperature doesn't change but it expands. And then what you have is adiabatic expansion. Remember, adiabatic is when there's no loss of heat, but it gets bigger. And then what you have is you have isothermal compression. So you have isothermal compression, which means the temperature does not change, but then what you do is you kind of squeeze the system back together. And what this does is it just repeats itself, and you basically get back where you started. So the efficiency. The efficiency of a heat engine can be defined as 1 minus Tc over Th. Now Tc is the temperature of what is cold, so it's the inside of the refrigerator, or it's the cold reservoir uh, for this particular engine. And Th is the temperature of the hot. Now it is imperative that these be in Kelvin. If you put them in Fahrenheit or Celsius, this will not work. It has to be in Kelvin. Also realize that what you get is you're going to get a decimal. No matter what, you're going to get a decimal that if it's asking for percent efficiency, you actually have to multiply by 100. Heat exchangers. So heat exchangers are actually very, very important because um, they allow us to move heat relatively easily uh, into and out of a system. So what you have is you have coolant in a car. You have radiator fluids. It's green stuff that you kind of pour in. And what it does is it maintains the temperature of the car by having a high specific heat capacity and allowing you to transfer the heat out without changing the temperature so much. Same thing with Freon and air conditioning and water in your own body. 
All of these things have a very high specific heat capacity, and what they allow you to do is they allow you to transfer that heat to something and not change the temperature very much, and then actually transfer that heat to another part. Now, you should know the relationship between heat, temperature, and work. Pretty much the first law of thermodynamics, delta U equals Q plus W, um, what goes up, what goes down, and so forth. You should know the four laws of thermodynamics, the zeroth, the first, the second, the third. And you should also be able to give examples of each of them, saying, hey, yes, uh, this is an example of the second law of thermodynamics because heat is dissipating. You should also understand the key vocabulary, such as isochoric, adiabatic, those sorts of things, and how they are particularly useful in plugging in stuff into um, the first law of thermodynamics. And also, you should understand the role of the laws of thermodynamics in creating air conditioners, refrigerators, and heaters.